welcome once again to Real Shame, a show where we talk about our list of movie blind spots. My name is not Adam, it's Andy. And I'm not Andy, I'm Adam. And on Monday's episode, we talked about a movie from 2010 starring Jennifer Lawrence, directed by a lady named Deborah Granick. It was called Winter's Bone. And Adam, you paired that with another movie directed by Deborah Granick. And it is... Down to the Bone. Because we had to choose two movies with bone in the title. <laughs> and we didn't choose Play It to the Bone. Uh, this came out in 2004. All right. A woman tries to balance being a mother, being a wife, and being a drug addict and down to the bone. Age of first use. High school. Okay. You never tried to stop? Yeah, lots of times. Okay. Your employee knows where you are? Uh, I, it's a means on my vacation. Okay, so he doesn't know? No. Okay, so there's no problems at the job with your job performance or anything like that? No. no. Okay, good. No. Good. Children? Boys. How many? Two. Two. They're aware of your drug use? It's a good question. Um, no. Okay. Uh, this movie debuted in the Sundance Film Festival in 2004. But I think it actually came out on video uh, a little bit later in 2005, if I read that correct correctly. Um, it stars uh, Vera Farmiga as Irene. Um, she's probably the the biggest name you know from the cast. I was gonna say she's the only person I recognize. Yeah. I didn't recognize anybody. She'd else. go on and do like a bunch of. The, she does the Conjuring movies, which you're you're a fan of, and all that kind of stuff. Um, Tasa Farmiga is her sister, not her daughter. Like I was uh, yeah. thinking. Well, they, there's a big age. There's disparity. a big age. That's why yeah. you, you are forgiven for thinking it yeah. might be your daughter because there, there there's a big gap between them. And the movie also stars Hugh Dillon as Bob and Clint Jordan as Steve. I think those are the three kind of main people that we follow in this movie. Again, uh, I didn't, probably didn't say who uh, directed by Deborah Granick again, who directed Winter's Bone, and also written by uh, Jean Michael Dessard, Deborah Granick, and Annie Krugler. Uh, so, uh, good writing on there, uh, with Deborah Granick again. It's a movie that I haven't seen. I'm sure it's a movie you haven't seen, right. I've never seen but it. it's your week. So did you know anything about Down to the Bone before I threw it on your list? And what'd you think of Down to the Bone this time around? I think, I, yeah, I've, ne I've never seen it. I, I think I've seen the title before, yeah. but n I didn't know anything, a single thing about this movie or who was in it. I don't know. I know who Vera Farmiga is now. Yeah. Because I've seen her in a lot of things, but I, yeah, it, I was completely ignorant of what went on in this film. I will just jump right into it. I really enjoyed this film. Oh wow! Yeah, I it's so I, I I don't mind watching movies that don't necessarily have a, a strong plot or a strong story if they're still interesting to me, and I found this movie really interesting which is weird to say because i know a lot of people watch this film and they're bored out of their yeah. minds watching this film because it it's shot on i think digital video right very much so yeah and i mean it's, <laughs> it doesn't even it's, try to look very like film. evident yeah, yeah, yeah it's very evident that it's it's not film but i think that really really adds to the movie and I'm going to steal your word that you used last time. I think it gives it a great degree of verisimilitude for this film because this film almost plays like a documentary to me. Yeah, yeah. I, I can definitely and I think that, I think I think that's probably on, I would say that's probably on purpose. Oh, I, yeah, I, I most definitely agree. I, I I think that if you saw this film back in 2004, Vera Farmiga was an unknown then. You could. Yeah, think absolutely. She think was that this Irene, was a, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Think this this was a documentary. Now seeing it, you obviously know that she's playing a character. But to me, that doesn't matter. I still, it's not like I pretended like it was a documentary or anything like that. But it just it felt like that to yeah. me because it is shot on digital video, so it looks like somebody's just carrying a camera around and they're following this lady and seeing kind of the struggles that she goes with in being a parent to two children and a wife to the Steve character. Uh, but she 
ends up kind of leaving him and having an affair with this other guy who's he's a nurse but he's a former addict and unfortunately when two former addicts kind of collide they can have bad influences on each other yeah Yeah, and they and they kind of uh you know well they don't kind of they end up doing drugs again and getting arrested and doing some other things but yeah i mean again i can see kind of Deborah Granick, I mentioned last time, cites people like Ken Loach and Mike Lee and Shane Meadows, people like that as inspirations to her. And I totally can see that. Again, in this film, this is a working class lady yep. trying to support her family. I mean, her husband works too, but I don't... You really get yeah, too much... I, right. I'm not really sure what he does. And I, you know, he's for, trying to, They're trying the, to finish the house. And yeah, for a while I thought they were stuff. separated because I felt like yeah, was his house weird. was different than her house yeah. and all that kind of stuff. It, but. it wasn't always clear. Yeah, I completely agree. But she's working at a grocery store. <laughs> and I love the part when they call, so she goes to rehab because she's oh, like, you know what? They pull I, her I'm the office. The and so she yeah. co- she gets pulled into the office and they're like, you're going really, really slowly. <laughs> and she just flat out says, look, to tell you the truth. I was high. Like when uh, the, when I was going fast, I was high all the time. Yeah. But I've gone to rehab, and I'm not. So now I'm slower because I'm not high. And they're yeah. like, uh, "You're fired." Yeah, basically, yeah, you, you know what our drug policy is. And yeah, and <laughs> I feel like in some movies that would be played for a laugh, and it it, it kind of can be comical. I, I did. I thought it was funny. But I, it, I did but laugh. Yeah, it was. It, it does. Just because she's like, I was high when I was when I was yeah. fast. I was high. Now I'm not high. So I mean, I'm slow. Take your pick. Yeah, <laughs> I've know? worked at a I've worked at a grocery store, and, <laughs> and trust me, it's mind numbing. It's not. Oh, Oh, yeah. kind of kind of work to do yeah I, well, I think any any kind of job retail or whatever where you're selling something yeah. or you're or when she's in the break room and the lady just has her till right there and you're just yeah. like and she's kind of tempted almost yeah, tempted yeah, to yeah, maybe yeah. take a little bit of that money but she doesn't yeah it's just like whoa i mean so yeah it kind of pulls yeah. you in that stuff yeah but but no i mean uh, again I, I i can totally see how people watch this film and they go well nothing happens in this film or i because I, I read you know or looked at least looked at some of the imdb reviews and people are like this movie, who wants to watch a movie about this loser who's yeah. doing this, whatever. But, I mean, I think it's a lot, to me, it, anyways, deeper than that. Because you see a woman who, I mean, this sort of thing happens. Yeah, you know? I mean, this is, this is real life. And I think that's why I like this movie so much is because I, I, I don't mind seeing, you know, I don't think this movie is graphic or anything like that. But warts and all kind yeah. of depictions of somebody... In real life, especially again, I think Deborah Granick is exceptionally talented, and I brought to the screen by somebody like her. I think it, it works for me. So, what about you? I know you were warmer, warmer on yeah. Winter's Bone than myself. How about on this movie? Uh, I'm I'm not as warm on this movie as you are. I yeah. think a lot of what you're saying is ringing true with me. Yeah, I do kind of feel it does feel a little long in the tooth and a little. Um, language uh, overall, yeah. and, and, I, and I get that. But yeah, I get that. you know, where it's kind of interesting that I ended up pairing these movies with the stuff we were talking about last week because they're all like kind of slice of life movies. Yeah. And to me, this movie feels more true than we got with any of the Big Chill or yeah. you know, the Ice Storm. And I don't know if that's just because I'm probably uh, my uh, where I am where I grew up and stuff like that's probably more akin to those other movies than it is with her. So maybe I don't have as much to kind of compare her situation to in my real life. And so therefore everything I'm seeing is true. And over when we see the other stuff, it rings false to me. Maybe there's, there's a little bit of cognitive distance with that stuff, but I do feel like her, her two movies feel more true and more authentic than we kind of got um, with those prior movies, not to, yeah. use that to dissuade anyone from watching or say, take anything away from it. But that's kind of where I felt. So I do like this kind of, um, like you said, warts and all approach to it. I think it's very interesting. Uh, I, it, you know, it's just, it's, it's, it's sad. It really is. And, yeah. and like you said, I think a lot of uh, America, a lot of people where I in the world kind of live this life of destitute and all this stuff where they're, you know, you know, trying to get by and all that kind of stuff. And it's really sad. And it's an interesting look at it. I do, like I said, wish there was a little bit more plot going on. There was something to kind of a reason to be filming or a reason to be looking at her life right now. Yeah. Kind of stuff. Uh, and there, we don't really get that from this movie, 
but um, I I didn't enjoy I did not not enjoy watching it and going down this path again. I I you know honestly, I did not know De- Deborah Granick before watching these two movies, but no. now I'm kind of really interested in watching her her movies because I I I I've liked the two that I've seen so yeah. far, and I think she's like you said a very talented filmmaker and want to watch more of her stuff. Yeah, I, I definitely want to watch the all the things that she's she has yet to come in movies like Leave No Trace that that she's already done that we haven't seen. I think, uh, yeah, she's 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 good at what she does. She was born to do films, yeah. in my opinion. And I'll say Vera Farmiga, I think nails it. You know, she yeah, knocks she it does. out of the park. I think it's easy to see why just a couple of years after this, she was starring in or co-starring in a Martin Scorsese movie. Yep. And she's in The Departed right after this. And then she eventually was nominated for Up in the Air. Which I really like. Years later. I yeah. like the movie, Jason Reitman movie. Yeah, yeah she she disappears as this as yeah. this kind of person. Like, So she, yeah, like you said, if I'm sure, in, like you said, in 2004, people wouldn't know her from Adam yeah. and thought she, this was a documentary. So totally. I, I do think the, um, I wish it was a little bit more polished, but I think after I, hear, I like the rawness after hearing it, yeah. you talk about the rawness of it and how it feels more like a documentary, I've kind of wavered back from yeah. from where I was on that. So I, I I can go both ways with it. I think it, I think it's really good. Um, uh, so this is an extension of a award winning short she did for the Sundance Film Festival called Snake Fed. I, I don't think either of us have seen that. No. I might have to check that out and see what's different, what's similar, what's different between those two. Um, this film premiered at the Sundance Film Festival in 2004, and it won the Director's Award for Granick, and it won the Special Jury Prize for Acting for um, uh, Vera Farmiga. So, and I can see why. This is really good. Uh, so, uh, do we have any critics uh, reviews on this on this movie? We do. Really quickly, I want to yeah. say if you enjoy, I think Winter's Bone and or don't down to the bone, either or whatever you enjoy them both, you enjoy at least one of them. I think you can look or should look into the movies of Kelly Reichart, at least the early films of Kelly Reichart, because I think again they have good kind of maybe a little bit more polished, especially than down to the bone, but I think they're good kind of films where. Some people might watch them and go, nothing happens, but I think they're interesting stories. Old Joy is one. Wendy and Lucy is one. It's got Michelle Williams and her dog, which is a, a good film. And then also another movie that I was reminded of when we watched or when I watched Down to the Bone is a movie that came out, I think, two years after this called Sherry Baby with Maggie Gyllenhaal. Similar kind of story, working class kind of lady. I can't remember if she has kids in that movie. But she's got some drug yeah. problems and, and whatnot. And Maggie Gyllenhaal is really good in that film as well. So check those out if you have not already. So this movie is 94% fresh on Rotten Tomatoes. I believe it. I think it's really good. And 71% audience score. I didn't find a Roger Ebert review of this film. Perhaps he reviewed it and I missed it, but I didn't see it. But Linda Malton gives it three stars. Just like he gave Winter's Bone. Three stars for both. All right. Well, that was Down to the Bones, how we felt about it. Uh, let us know what you feel about it. And on these Wednesday episodes, we always like to uh, talk, uh, an- talk, answer viewers' questions, uh, uh, however those are. We and talk. We talk to answer them. We do. We we try to answer them, but we end up just talking. <laughs> uh, viewers' questions. And this week we picked one uh, that is pertinent to the movie we reviewed earlier in the week, which was uh, Winter's Bone. And it is what are some of our Jennifer, favorite Jennifer Lawrence movies? Yeah. So Jennifer Lawrence has had a uh, big and esteemed career. A lot of it, uh, you know, before Winter's Bone, but because of Winter's Bone, Bone, they've kind of she's kind of uh, skyrocketed into stardom. Yes. She's uh, done the X Men, the uh, the prequel part of the X Men movies. She was cast as Mystique, uh, the younger version of Reca- Rebecca Romaine Stamos, or I think it's Rebecca Romaine now. She's also worked with David O. Russell a bunch of times. They did the Silver's Lines playbook. They did American Hustle. They did, uh, what are some of the other ones they did? <laughs> was Joy a David O. Russell? I think Joy was a David O. Russell movie. Yeah. Um, and she's also done the Hunger Game movies, which was a big ad- adaptation of those young adult uh, teen uh, dystopian novels. Yeah. So I I feel like I've covered probably about 90% of her movies with those different categories there. Uh, like everyone else we talk about, there's probably going to be some blind spots and some holes that we haven't seen. But uh, 
yeah, that's where we are with that stuff. There are some glaring holes in mine because I I have not seen, I think, two of the movies that she's been nominated for. And one of the ones she won, she won for Silver Lines Playbook, which I've not seen. Yeah, I don't think, yeah, I think it's on your list. And I've not seen Joy. I think she was nominated for that, but of course didn't win. She's only won the one time. I haven't seen The Hunger Games. I have saw part one, yeah. but I haven't seen the rest of them. I have seen all the X-Men movies, and I have seen American Hustle. So we're, mm. we're doing good there. And you've seen Mother? I have seen Mother. and You've seen, seen Mother Sp- more I've, than I've, once. I've, no, I only saw it once. Oh, I thought I've, you saw it once. I've seen Red Sparrow. I have not seen Red Sparrow. I've skipped that one. Uh, yeah, I, 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 for you, I've kind of been the same thing. I have not seen Passengers. I've heard different things about Passengers. Doesn't seem that interested in me. I wouldn't. Honestly, have. I'm burnt out with Chris Pratt. I don't know what it is, but I'm just like, <laughs> no, thank you. I he seems like a nice guy, I guess. Uh, well, I feel like I say that, and it's like a like a nag at him. I, he seems nice. But for some reason, I, I'm just not really too interested in anything. I just thought it was a crummy said, movie. Yeah. I, I, wouldn't, I didn't care for Passengers. And I, I, I had no problems with Chris Pratt, but I just didn't like it. So, uh, yeah. Uh, I, you know, I feel like most people would probably pick Silver Lines Playbook. I think Kirby would pick it. She really adores that movie. Yeah. Uh, for me, the team-up of... Uh, what's his name? Uh, da, 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 Bradley Cooper and uh, Jennifer Lawrence is their age difference really stands out to me in that movie. Really, and I don't even know if they have a big age difference, but when I watch the movie, it's just like, oh uh, no, they do. He's like a. Well, it's about fifteen years, I think. He's like a man, and she's like a child to me, and I'm just like, ooh. But yeah. I don't think the movie plays that way. Uh, so where do you have a, you want to call out a couple things or what do you want to do? Yeah. Uh, well, first of all, I want to call out, we, we were going to have to watch the beaver. Have you seen the beaver? I have seen the beaver. It's been a while. I think I watched the beaver and I didn't even know who Jennifer Lawrence was. Um, it's directed by Jodie Foster and the movie was on the, uh, the blacklist, right? Um, which the blacklist is basically a list of unproduced Hollywood movies that, uh, that, uh, people assistants will share around and kind of rank Mm -hmm. and all that kind of stuff. So at the time when I was wanting to be a screenwriter, I heard of the blacklist and I was very paid very special attention to what scripts were on there. And I tried to read those scripts and then if those scripts were ever made into a movie, I kind of went out of my way to watch those movies. Cause you know, like I said, they're uh, people in the industry, highly ranking them and all that kind of stuff. So I have seen the beaver again, uh, don't remember much about it. I remember it came, when it came out, and I was like, yeah. I I need to see this, and I never have, so I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to correct that. But I don't even know who she plays in the Beaver. Is she like Bill she Gibson's daughter? No, I'm just kidding. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> in the Beaver, like a puppet. The Beaver is a puppet that, he picked up in the uh, trash. Yeah. He does. He does the the. Um... <laughs> oh, never mind. I was gonna say he does the. Uh... Oh. Yeah, it's not the William Hurt thing from uh, from big the chill? big big yeah the big chill with the beaver talks himself with it yeah pretty yeah. much. All right, so uh, I think on another episode we were picking favorite something or other, and I said X Men Days of Future Past. Yeah, we so were. Well, I don't we, want to go with that again, but I do. We like did that James movie a lot. McAvoy movies. Yeah, so I don't want to go with that again because I, I felt like I already picked that. Even though I, again, I, I I'm a big fan of of that movie. A first class and Days of Future Past, yeah. both, but I'm gonna I'm gonna skip that one. I saw American Hustle. That's one of the few collaborations she did with David O. Russell that I've actually seen. I just don't remember a lot about it. I want to say I was kind of comparing it too much to Boogie Nights, maybe. Yeah. And so I was a little bit like, eh, because I'm such a big Boogie Nights fan. So I probably didn't give it a fair shake. I was I gonna say, da- again. I was gonna say the Big Hustle feels like David O. Russell trying to do. Boogie Nights. Boogie, or trying to do a Paul Thomas Anderson kind of movie. I gotcha. Because then Dave O. Russell also do like The Fighter. He did a bunch of stuff with Christian Bale too. He, he did do The Fighter. He got in a fight. He he was a fighter against Lily Tomlin. He got in a fight with her. That was for it. sure. <laughs> really? Yeah. So, okay, so, all right. We don't, okay, so what, what else? Yeah, so I, for me, I'm just going to skip to, because I'm skipping all these Hunger Games. I'm skipping the X-Men movies. I'm just going to talk about Mother and Red Sparrow. I think Red Sparrow got a lot of flack because it's derivative of a lot of other movies, probably Atomic Blonde and yeah. a lot of mixtures. But I I had fun with Red Sparrow. Okay, I liked it. I I'm gonna say, especially since I haven't seen Silver Linings Playbook and Joy and some of the more kind of dramatic stuff that she's done besides Winter's Bone, 
I think just for flat out fun, and because I haven't seen the Hunger Games also, I would go with Red Sparrow, but I would also say definitely Mother is yeah. insane. So I think Mother should just be seen because it's insane. But I had to, I had a lot of fun with Red Sparrow, and and it's probably not that great of a movie if I'm being completely honest. But I yeah. liked it. I, I had fun with it. It's fun. All right. Okay. Red Sparrow for me. Red Sparrow for Weird you. Choice probably, but uh, yeah. you know I'm gonna go with the X Men movies. I you know I don't, I just didn't want to do that because I did it with James McAvoy. Yeah. So I just oh. feel like those movies I've seen more yeah. of her in. I've seen all but the last Hunger Game movie. Again, the David O. Russell stuff, his movies just don't really speak to me, and I think she does a she does a good job in them, but they're just not really my cup of tea. Haven't seen Mother, haven't seen Red Sparrow, and you know it's it was just crazy that she got kind of cast into this franchise, and then she became a giant star, and yet still had to like I don't know if the word slum. <laughs> to go back I mean, and do all these kind of friends. Some people might think of it like that. Sorry, hit the like that, yeah. They have to go back and slum it with all these kind of X-Men movies. So that's always been an interesting um, yeah. a thing to view and stuff like that. And she does a great job. She's not like yeah. phoning it in as... as uh, well, she might have been phoning it in in Dark Phoenix. I just feel like the... <laughs> I, I, mean, I think everybody was. I feel like the movie let her down. Like, <laughs> like those movies started out good and then they... She's like, drive me off this picture. Yeah. Yeah, Blazing and then uh, what's his face decided to take back over the franchise, and he just killed it. Yeah, like uh, oh yeah, he just he's yeah. <laughs> so uh, so, so yeah, yeah. X Men just X Men franchise kind of in general. Or? Yeah, I mean I think like of those movies, like Days of Future Past is yeah. really good, awesome, and also First Class is really yeah. really good. Yeah. Um, They're both great. And then you know, like I said, the other guy took over and just <laughs> killed it. <laughs> he, he just did. Uh, uh, yeah. Okay, right. so that was our favorite Jennifer Lawrence movies. Let us know what your favorite Jennifer Lawrence movie is. Maybe it's Silver Lining's Playbook. Maybe it is Joy, one of the movies that we maybe haven't seen or maybe weren't big keen on. But you have to let us know. Leave a comment down below if you're watching us on YouTube or shoot us an email, realshame at gmail.com. Uh, we also answer your questions like this one at that email address, so please shoot us an email. We would appreciate that. Uh, like, subscribe, share the show, do all the social media stuff. We really would appreciate that. And stay tuned next time as we cross the movies off of Andy's list of shame and we start getting into our more wintry, Christmassy kind of movies. Well, next week will be yours, your list of shame. Is that again? Yeah. I, I don't I don't know how this works. This, this week is winter's <laughs> bone. This week is winter's bone down to the bone. So my list. All next, right. Next week, yeah. We picked some stuff off my list, his list. I don't know. We'll figure it out at some point. But you don't have to worry about that. All you have to do is stay tuned and we'll see you next time, guys. Bye. <laughs>